Let's thank God and bless Him. We're here again. Father, we honor you. We bless you. We appreciate you for everything that you are to us. For all that you have done for us. We give you praise. We give you glory. You have taught us so much in this World War College. We give you praise. We thank you. You have have fought so many battles for us. You have taught our hands to war and our fingers to fight. Blessed be your name, Lord. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Father, thank you. We bless you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For all you have taught us thus far at the work college. We thank you, Lord, for the victories that you have given us. Mm. We thank you for the testimonies that have followed the video uh, the audio tapes that are on the blog as well as on YouTube. We thank you for showing yourself strong and showing yourself faithful to your word that you taught us to teach. Blessed be your name, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Today again we are here, Holy Spirit, take control, take over our Lord and teach us what to do, what to, what to teach the people, so that if possible the whole world will be set free from the clutches of Satan. Because that's why Jesus came, that we might be set free and saved from all our enemies. So that we can serve you in, 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 and from all our enemies and from the hands of those that hate us. Yes. So that we can serve you in quietness. We can serve you in holiness and righteousness all the days of our lives without fear. Yes. That is why Jesus came. Yes. And that is why we are teaching these things. Blessed be your name, Father. Amen. We give you praise and glory Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. We ask for a covering of the blood of Jesus all over us, all over our loved ones, wherever they might be, that you surround us with your blood, surround us with your pillar of fire and cloud and your angels to minister to us. And to all those, we pray the same for everyone that will listen to the tapes, that your blood will surround them and guard them from counter-attacks. Blessed be your name, Father. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So this is um, this is um, mop up operation part two. Mop up operation part two. We have fought the main war, and we are now mopping up and cleaning out our land of promises from anything that might still be hiding there. Amen. Amen. So the next topic is dealing with hidden enemies in close places. Hidden enemies in close places. In hidden places. They are hiding. The place where they are hiding is hidden. They want to hide. They want to make sure that you will not know that they are still there. So that they can continue to be shooting arrows at us. You know, so that we won't even know what else to do. We we will now be saying, "Ah, but God, we thought we have done this. No, 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 no. God has weapons that will smoke them out for us. And we find them in certain passages. Number one, hornets of the Lord. Exodus 23, Mama. Hornets of the Lord. H-O-R-N-E-T-S. A hornet is a bee. It's a, it's a kind of bee which is longer than the ordinary tiny, tiny bees. <clears throat> you know that the bees, ordinary bees themselves, they are very deadly. If they, if they give somebody many stings, the person can collapse just from, um, um, we'll call it anaphylactic attack. That is just out of reaction, you know, allergic reaction to the sting. It can kill anybody. And these things are poisonous. But these hornets of the Lord, they are giant, poisonous, and dangerous bees capable of stinging a person to death. They say a few of them can sting a person to death. But here we are talking about spirit hornets against the spirit strong men and their hordes of demons 
that are being manipulated against us by human agents. Amen. Amen. Now God promised us Exodus 23, 28. What does it say, Mom? 23, 28. And I will send hornets before thee. Uh -huh. Speak up, because we are recording. And I will send hornets before thee. Yes. Which shall drive out the Hibita, the uh -huh. Canaanites, and the Hittite, Hittite from, from before, before thee. thee. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So go to Deuteronomy 7, the same thing. It talks about them, that you will send hornets among them among them, and look to look for them where they're hiding it's very difficult to to hide from hornets yes the term 720 what does it say moreover the lord the god mm -hmm. will send the hornets among them mm -hmm. until they that are left mm -hmm. and hide themselves from thee, mm -hmm. be destroyed. Be destroyed. So you send this on it to destroy them. So all we have to do, if you are having spiritual attacks, and you you don't even have to wait till you have spiritual attacks. When you have prayed all these kind of prayers, and you feel that there's some, still something hiding somewhere, Lord, whatever is hiding anywhere, release your hornets to go and find them and destroy them in Jesus' name. Remember when we were praying, uh, when we were doing the prayers against Leviathan, what we used at that time, what, the, uh, what God uses against Leviathan that is hiding, is uh, the serpent of the Lord. And we read it at that time in Amos 9. He said, I will search for you on top of the mountains. I will search for you in the holes of the ground. I will search for you even under the sea. I will send my serpent to search for you. And slay you there. So God himself knows that sometimes they are hiding from us. Amen. Amen. Number two. God himself has some fishers and some hunters. They call them the fishers and hunters of God. Jeremiah 16, 16 to 18. These will hunt for workers of iniquity that are hiding and bring their evil works to an end. All we want is that their evil works should come to an end. Whether you are the human agent or you are the strong man, God should just fish you out and disgrace you. You know, we talked about um, how they can just be slandering you from behind. That's the kind of work that this, uh, this kind of uh, uh, weapons against hidden enemy in closed places. They can even be your your the pretending to be your friend. They are not hiding. They are just in closed places. They are just in hidden places. They can be in your household. They can be your, your best friend at work. But they are hiding in plain sight. When God begins to send the hornets against them, it will destroy the power that they are using and it will release them from that assignment. Amen. Amen. So Jeremiah 16, 16 to 18, what does it say? Behold, I mm -hmm. will send for many fishers, mm -hmm. said the Lord, and they shall fish them. Mm -hmm. And after whom I send for many hunters, mm -hmm. and they shall hunt them from every mountain mm -hmm. and from every hill mm -hmm. and out of the coast of the rocks. rocks. Mm -hmm. for for my eyes are upon all their ways. Yes. They are not hid from my but face. They are not hidden from God. Yes. Neither is their iniquity hid from my eyes. Yes. And first I will recompense their iniquity and their sin double. Yes. Because they have defied my land. They have killed my inheritance with the See carcasses. carcasses of their detestable and abominable things. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, this is very important to pray in families. You see? Because some people, they can be pretending to be Christians, mm. but at the back, you know, in the night, at the weekends, they know where they travel to, to go and make um, 
detestable and abominable things that God is talking about. And this defiles the land. It defiles the families. You only need one of such a person in your family tree. And the whole tree is in trouble. So we ask God, fish them out. Destroy their evil work. They have, they have filled our family with the, their carcasses of their detestable and abominable things. Lord, destroy those their works in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Number three weapon is the serpent, serpent of the Lord, which I've just spoken about. <clears throat> the serpent of the Lord. When they're hiding from you, anywhere, any part of creation, Amos 9, Mama. let's open it down. Where they're hiding from you, from any part of creation, you don't even know where they are, the, the arrows are coming from. You just ask the serpent of the Lord. And ask the serpent God to release the serpent of the Lord to go and destroy all their works. Whether they are hiding in, in, any, in the mountains, in the holes, under the sea, we will locate them. Oh, yeah. It must 9 1 to 3. I saw the Lord standing upon the altar mm -hmm. and he said, Smite the lintel. lintel of the door mm -hmm. that the post may shake, shake. Mm -hmm. and put them in the head of all, all of them. Of, all of them. Mm -hmm. And I will slay the last of them with the sword. Mm -hmm. He that fleeth of them shall not flee away. Mm -hmm. And he that es escapeth of them shall not be delivered. Mm -hmm. Though they dig into her, mm -hmm. then shall my hand take them to mm -hmm. that land. Though there my hand shall take them. Yes. Take them. Mm -hmm. Though they climb up to heaven, then will I bring them down. Bring them down. Yes. And though they hide themselves in the top of Carmel. Mount Carmel, yes. <clears throat> I will search and take them out there. Yes. Mm -hmm. And though they be hid from my they be hid from the, my sight. They be hid from my sight in mm -hmm. the bottom of, of the, the sea. sea. Mm -hmm. Then will I command the serpent and fish shall bite them. them. Amen. Amen. So that's another another I always use this as we said, we must always use this sub, um, this Amos 9 when we're dealing with Leviathan. Because you know, we told you that Leviathan likes to network. In fact, in uh, I think we read a passage in Jeremiah 47, which he talked about every helper that remaineth for, for Leviathan. He has helpers all over the place. And he talked about uh, them in the land of the Philistines, in the land of the captor, and so on and so forth. We release the serpent of the Lord against them. We find them wherever they are hiding. Then the in the snakes, you know, they like to lay eggs. They have to. They may have some babies hiding somewhere, still hatching in their eggs. They may still have. You use this sap. You use this against them automatically. Don't wait until they hatch and come and start troubling you. Hallelujah. <clears throat> now another major, another major. Um, those are that's all for um, enemies hiding in closed places. Another major t t topic is dealing with unrest. Dealing with unrest, riot situations, marauders, protests and so on and so forth <clears throat> dealing with unrest riot situations marauders any people that come rushing to to just be or along the road just they will say they are protesting before you know that they, they've started destroying cars they've started destroying houses they start so this is when you know <clears throat> i use this a lot once some people say yes we are protesting against the government tomorrow i'm not saying you should not protest against the government but the government is not is not a person and those people that always get harmed 
when there are protests and not the government. <clears throat> and so whenever we know that there's going to be a protest tomorrow, some people are rioting somewhere, this is what we will, we will pray. And it's always good to pray it the night before. Because the first weapon is the evening tide of the Lord. We're coming. It's the evening tide of the Lord. And it, and it comes up at midnight. It rises up at midnight. And it destroys, it will swallow all their works. And destroy all their plans. Before morning, all their plans have been, have been destroyed. I've seen, I've seen it work many times. You'll just find that, ah, that protest, they said they are protesting in Abuja. And only a few people came out. And uh, immediately they saw the police, they started, you know, and before you know it, a protest that they will tell you that they're going to protest till forever. It will just last one or two days and it will fizzle out. Because every evening we will, we will pray and release, uh, um, and release the evening tide against them. When you have situations like, um, um, like the, where you have insurgents that will just come rushing out at the people, come rushing out. I remember I had a, there was a cook I had, and she was, she was from a Boeing state. And they were having border clashes with another state. So they said from the other states, they would just come rushing into their villages and start killing people. So I told them, we gave them this. And so tell them, every night, they must raise up the evening tide of the Lord. And at least in their own environment, that thing quenched. And they were not having uh, so much um, of these marauders coming in to kill people. So let's, let's find... Uh, so the first, the first weapon against riots, unrest, any kind of protest situation... We are, which will just go out of hands. Sorry, Isaiah 17. <clears throat> it will just go out of hands. This is what, um, now let, let me, yes, while we are open. Now, so this first weapon, number one weapon, is the evening tide of the Lord. And it's like the evening tide that he raised against army, uh, against Pharaoh and his army. As reported in Exodus 14, 27. It says, And the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea, and the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the hosts of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them, and there remained not so much as one of them. Amen. <clears throat> Excuse me. Remember always Exodus 14, 27 and 28. Remember also always that we are dealing with the power behind these things. In fact, I have seen before the end SARS started, I will see in the, in the uh, I will have revelations of going into houses, uh, like abandoned houses in the jungle, and you see youths gathering. I didn't know what. I just knew they were going to protest. I saw youths gathering in groups in different rooms. And they were there. And I was going around, you know, looking at them. They've been planning that thing for a long time. But what we did, and we, I mean, we saw what happened with NSAS. So many lives were lost. The thing went on and on and on was for 20 days. In fact, I almost lost one of my sons because he was sick and he couldn't go to hospital. He needed to be on a drip. He needed to. He could not go out of his house because these boys have blocked all the roads. So we, we should not think that uh, it's not that we Christians are saying people should not protest when the government, when they are dissatisfied with the government. But the problem is that your protest must not lead to the death of the innocent. And that is why we will pray this kind of prayer against them. So that the powers that they, they the power that they're going to use must be must be curtailed. So that even if they're going to protest, because those powers that are pushing them are bloodthirsty demons. Mm -hmm. It's the powers behind 
that the bloodthirsty demons are looking for who to kill. We must never allow it to happen again in Jesus' name. Mm. So let's look at the uh, evening tide of the Lord is spoken of in Isaiah 17 from 12 to 14. Let's look at it. Woe to the multitude of many people. That's a riot, isn't it? Yes. Which make a noise uh -huh. like the noise of the sea. You know when they are rioting, they are making noise. They they are singing all sorts of solidarity songs. Yes. And to the rushing of nations. Yes. That makes the rushing like the rushing of mighty waters. waters. Yes. The nations shall rush like. Rushing of many waters, yes. But God shall rebuke them, mm -hmm. and they shall be far off, yes, and shall be chased as the chaff of the mountains before the winds, yes, and like the rolling things before the white whirlwind, yes. And behold, at evening tiding, trouble, 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 and before the morning, he is not he that means he's, he, the, it has disappeared, it has fizzled out by morning, it has fizzled out. Yes. This is the portion of them that spoil us mm -hmm. and a lot of them that rob, rob us. us. So what we are fighting against <coughs> uh, uh, with these spiritual weapons is the power behind them that will lead to spoiling and, and robbery, you know, robbing our children, robbing houses. They can be robbing people on the streets just because they are protesting about school fees or about something, you know. So this is the one. And you can see that there are two weapons here, actually. The Number one is in verse 13. That's the rebuke of the Lord. He said, the nation shall rush like the rushing of many waters, but God shall rebuke them and they shall flee afar off. So that's verse 13. You have the, um, you have the rebuke of the Lord. So the rebuke of the Lord shall chase them like the chaff of the mountains before with the wind. Like a rolling thing before the whirlwind. So that's the first weapon in that passage. The second uh, weapon is the evening tide in verse 14. By evening tide, they will have trouble. We don't know the kind of trouble it is. We leave it to God to do it himself. And by morning, all their plans to spoil and to rob and to plunder in other, in other pass, uh, um, in another translation it says they plunder us those that spoil us and plunder us and rob us they rob us of the lives of our young uh, children that are just on the street or just so in fact children do not go to school on such a day so we do not take such a thing uh, uh, carelessly we declare this word of the Lord and it will go forth and begin to take and begin to take effect <clears throat> hallelujah we used to use it a lot during the election time in nigeria every night we would decree ask for the rebuke of the lord because once they go to for election and things are not going their own way they start fighting they start fighting and and rioting and we've been using this since 2014 consistently and even reports will come at the end of the elections and wow we thought these elections would be very violent <clears throat> but it is unprecedentedly peaceful and we will just shake our heads that yeah it's the evening tide and the rebuke of the lord that is at work bless thank you jesus amen, amen. hallelujah amen. now number two number two weapon for when you we know there is going to be riots and protest and all that even when you don't know and you just hear that there's a riot or oh, they just started rioting somewhere we will decree we will decree for this second one angelic patrol to enforce the peace we ask for angelic patrol to enforce the peace and god has special angels for this he has those that ride on horses zekra mama zekra one he has those that ride on horses and those that ride in chariots, war chariots with horses, and they will and they will enforce the peace. 
they will make sure that the peace is enforced. Amen. Even when the riots have started, we can ask for angelic patrol to enforce the peace. We always pray this just before elections. We ask for God to release angelic patrol. So Zechariah 1, 8 to 11. I saw by night, mm -hmm. and behold, a man riding upon a red horse, mm -hmm. and he stood among the metal tree. trees yes. that were in the bottom. bottom. Yes. And behind him were their red horses, mm -hmm. sparkling and white. Speckled and white. Speckled and white. Okay, so we have different um, different horses here, and there were angels riding on them. Red horses, speckled horses, and white horses. So an angel was showing Zechariah all these things. Nine. Then said I, O oh my Lord, what are these? Mm -hmm. And the angel that talked with me said unto me, mm -hmm. I will show thee what this be. Mm -hmm. And the man that stood among the mighty trees, trees yes. answered and said, These are they who the Lord mm -hmm. has sent to walk to and to the earth. So the Lord himself, L-O-R-G in capitals, the man of war, sent them to walk to and fro through the earth. Those are angelic patrols on horses. 11. And they answered the angel of the Lord that stood mm -hmm. among the battles trees Please, uh -huh. and said, We have walked to and fro through the earth. Through the earth. Mm -hmm. And behold, all the earth seated, seated still. Seated still and is at, at rest. rest. Hallelujah. So we will ask the Lord and say, Lord, every night they must report to you. That we have walked to and fro Nigeria, we have walked to and fro our nation, and our nation is sitting still and is at rest. Amen. Amen. Why is the nation sitting still and is at rest? Because anywhere they find trouble, they will quench it. Anywhere they find trouble, they will quench it. Amen. Amen. The peace of God is sometimes, is sometimes, uh, <clears throat> is sometimes enforced by war and that is what these angels do so we pray lord release these angels and let them quench every trouble that may be fueling anywhere and let their report to you every night be that behold all nigeria sits still and is at rest in jesus name amen, amen. we we'll finish praying but the important thing is that you must quote those scriptures. As we said, we always quote, quote scriptures because the Bible says, Praise ye the Lord, ye angels of the Lord, that excel in strength, hearkening to the voice of his word, that do his bidding, hearkening to the voice of his word. So it means that immediately they hear the voice of the, the voice of the word of God that we are quoting, they are ready to go and do the bidding. Depending on which kind of angels they are. In which chapter are Amen. I think it's in one, Psalm 148. It's somewhere in Psalm 148. Praise ye him, ye his angels that excel, excel in strength, hearkening to the voice of his word. Hallelujah. Now, this, the second set of patrol angels are spoken of in Zechariah 6, 1 to 8. <coughs> and I turned mm -hmm. and lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, there came four chariots, mm -hmm. as from between two mountains. Yes. And the mountains were mountains of brass. Brass, amen. Let me just explain that. Mm -hmm. Zechariah 6, 1 to 8. Now, they, are, they told us they came from two mountains. They are not spiritual mountains. They are real mountains on this earth. And that's why they said, and the mountains were mountains of brass. Amen? That means mountains where you dig brass from. Those are not heavenly mountains. So. 
Hmm? Brass is, a, is an earthly metal. Verse 2. In the first channel to me. So they will come from heaven, coming down between mountains, and Zechariah was looking at them. Yes? In the first chariot, we have red, red horses. Horses, yes. And in the second chariot, black horses. So there were chariots with red horses, second chariot with black horses, yes. And in the third chariot, mm -hmm. white horses. White horses. And so in we, the, yes, in the fourth. In the fourth chariot, grizzled and bear horses. That means they were mixed color and grayish color, yes. Then I answered and said unto the angel that talked with me, mm -hmm. What are these, my Lord? Mm -hmm. And the angel answered and said unto me, These are the four spirits of the heavens, mm -hmm. which go forth from standing before the Lord of, of all, all the earth. earth. Remember always that our God is a man of war. God is not a civilian. And he controls armies. Listen, he can even control your own army. There's a time in the time of um, of a very good king, King Josiah. God told Pharaoh from the south, he said, pass through and go to Syria in the north and go and conquer them for me. And Josiah said, oh, you can't pass through Israel and, uh, and go and fight our enemies, our friends. These are our allies. And the Pharaoh was telling Joseph, uh, uh, Joshua, yeah, Josiah, he said, is it not the same God of heaven that said I should go and fight uh, uh, the, the Assyrians? He said, don't stand in my way. <clears throat> Excuse me, because it is the God of heaven that have sent me. <clears throat> Excuse me. So our God is in charge and he can use any army. But these are spirit armies. That's why he said they are spirits. All these are spirits uh, uh, in chariots and horses. But we know that the spiritual world controls the physical, isn't it? So they are sent from heaven. And what happened? Verse 6. The black horses. So they came from standing before the Lord of the earth. So he's the one that sent them forth as the commander. He said, go forth. And what did he tell them? The Six. black horses, mm -hmm. which are daring, mm -hmm. go forth into the north. North country, okay. So the black horses are to go, that is the assignment, is the north country. Yes? And the white go forth after, after them. them. So two sets out of four horses went to the north. Yes? And Seven. The uh, sorry, yes? And the Grisham goes forth to the south, to the south country. country. So the Grisham, only one set of horses were sent to the south country. Have you noticed that in most countries, a lot of unrest happens in the north? Mm. It's usually the north. North Sudan, South Sudan, Northern Nigeria, Southern Nigeria. It's usually the north. So two sets of horses on chariots were sent to the north and only one set was sent to the south yes seven and the people went forth mm -hmm. and sought to go that they might walk to, to and, and go through the earth uh -huh. and he said mm -hmm. get get you hands yes walk to and go through the earth mm -hmm. so they walked to and go through the earth amen let me just explain that so we have two sets of horses going to the north, one set of horses going to the south, and the fourth set, you know there are four um, chariots, four different types of chariots. The fourth ones were to now just be patrolling, or whether north, south, east, west, were just to be patrolling. So what then happened? Verse 8. So this is the report. At the end of the day, what happened? Then, cry, then cried he upon me, yes, and spake unto me, saying, saying mm -hmm. Behold, these that go towards the north country mm -hmm. have quieted my spirit, spirit in, in the north, north country. That means they have given my spirit rest. 
another translation says that uh, that oh i have this there's always trouble in the north okay now that we've sent two ah oh, now my spirit is quieted that there will be peace in the north country hallelujah we used to pray this for nigeria over and over and over sometimes i'll post it on facebook oh yeah let's let's ask for angelic assistance we must insist we pray and say lord let your uh, these uh, warrior angels go and quench every spirit of disorderliness every spirit of civil disobedience every bloodthirsty spirit they must be quenched so that we will have peace in our nation amen, amen. hallelujah now in the end we cannot finish talking about spiritual warfare without talking about counter-attacks what dealing with counter-attacks beloved if you attack the devil he will attack you back he will not even remember that he started it that he's the one who first came and and, and attacked you that you are quietly doing what god asked you to do and he came to attack you came to attack your children came to attack your finances attack your body attacked uh, uh, your promises of god now when you now begin to attack him back the kind of attack he will give back to you will depend on the kind of weapons that you used if you are using catapult he will just laugh at you he may not even answer you say is that all but if you bring if you now bring ak-47 and you bring uh, cannon balls cannon shooters and you bring ah he too is going to come at you because Jesus Christ has already told us that he is an armed strong man. Luke 11, 21. He said, when a strong man armed keepeth his palace, his goods are in peace. You can imagine all those goods that he stole from us. He's watching over them with, with arms, with weapons of war. So you have gone against him and with, with your own weapons of war and he is guarding his stronghold to make sure that you don't come in and take what he has stolen from you. So if you come at him, he is going to resist you by all means. And if you take anything and run off, he is going to pursue you. Remember last week, we looked at the case of Pharaoh that pursued the children of uh, Israel even after they had escaped pursued them with his whole army but we have the superior power of our God the most high God El Gibor the man of war the champion we have his superior power his superior weapons and remember always that we have two thirds of the angels working for us against the one third of angels that fell so of course we are the superior army and we were sent forth by the captain of our salvation to go and set the captives free so since he's the one that sent us everything that he has will be at our disposal to fight but they will come looking for you because we have put him to open shame like the children of israel <laughs> they put pharaoh and his uh, to open shame and he will not he will not uh, he will not take it lightly he must come fighting us remember elijah remember elijah on mount moriah after he has displayed that all power belongs to god and the God that answered by fire, he, he displayed his power that day. Because the children, the, uh, uh, the prophets of Baal, they used to call down fire. But that day, God showed them who created fire. And he withheld fire. Fire did not fall. And when fire would fall for Elijah, fire fell on an offering that has been drenched in water. And the fire licked up all the water and the remaining water, showing very clear, clearly <clears throat> that all power belongs to our God. 
So you must be ready for counter attacks. And you must, what I do, what I do is to preempt them. Is to preempt them. Now when we've done all manner of uh, spiritual warfare, we will now pray against counter attack. And that's what we want to learn right now. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Remember that the day after that when Jezebel when Jezebel heard that what happened at Mount Moriah let me read it for you. When Jezebel heard that um, Elijah has slew, slew all her prophets 850 of them and that he disgraced her prophets of Baal that fire did not fall. What? They have went and told the wife, Jezebel. First Kings 19, 1 and 2. And he had told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and withal how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, so let the gods do to me and more also if i make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time first kings 19 1 and 2. now we, they didn't tell us that elijah waited to see what he would do the bible says that elijah fled for his life you can imagine somebody who could face who could face 850 prophets of Baal? One little woman. <laughs> One little woman. But he knew the power behind her. He knew that the power behind her is the power that later came to be known by her name. And that is Jezebel. They call her the false prophet. <clears throat> they call her all manner of names. We have studied uh, Jezebel before. The daughter of Chaldeans. So, Elijah, I mean, Elijah fled for his life. He didn't wait. Now, there's also another case which we will look at counter attack in scripture. When Elijah sent to King Ahaziah, 2 Kings chapter 1. <clears throat> King Ahaziah was ill. And he went to, and he sent to them, to the gods of the Ekron, that uh, they should go and find out if he will live. In fact, they should come and heal him. So God sent Elijah to go and tell him that, oh, is, the, is it that to tell them, say, tell Ahaziah. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm just recovering from the flu. Uh, he said, go and tell Ahaziah, thus says the Lord, that is it that there is no God in Israel that you are sending to the God of the Ekron to come and uh, uh, to find out whether you will uh, to look for healing? He said, you will never recover from them. Thus says the Lord, you will never recover, you will die. <clears throat> the king was so furious that he sent <clears throat> captains of 53 he sent an avenging captain with 50 soldiers to go and arrest arrest just one little prophet just one elijah and maybe elisha was following him there but this time elijah did not fall he did not run away he sat on the mountain and he said come down thou man of god come down and he said, I will not come down. You call me a man of God? Oh, great. If I be a man of God, let fire come down and consume you all. And that's what happened. Fire came down and consumed them all. The captain, the first two captain and his 50 soldiers. That means 51 plus 51. That's 102. Yeah. So the third one knew that uh, all this is in chapter, Second Kings chapter 1. So all this, so this, the third captain and his 50 had learned his lesson. When he came, he didn't shout at Elijah. 
He called him my father. Let my life be very, very precious to you. But this is what the king sent me. So Elijah said, okay, well, you give me my respect. I'll go with you. Hallelujah. So this is what we must always be ready. We must not let them come. Be ready that there is going to be counterattack. Do not wait for them to come. Take the battle to their gates. Remember that scripture, Isaiah 28, we are always quoting. Take the battle to the gates of the avenger. Because God has promised us that if we are ready to do that, he will give us the power to have uh, to have to, uh, to gain victory over them. They don't need to get to your gates. So immediately after we do all this, we always pray against counterattack. Isaiah 28, 5 and 6. Isaiah 28, 5 and 6. In that day shall the Lord of hosts be for a crown of glory and for a diadem of beauty. A diadem is half a crown, the one that's only in front, unto the residue of the people. You see, it's only a residue of the people that God knows can do this kind of war. And for a spirit of judgment to him that seated in judgment. So before they come with the avenging angels, you are judging them where they are taking that decision in their gate. He said, and for strength to them that turn the battle to the gate. So before the battle leaves their gate, the gate of the avenging captain, we will release fire there. We will not wait for them to come. We release fire there. Hallelujah. So after every hot and strategic battles, when we know that, yes, you yourself will know, you are satisfied, yes, I have prayed that prayer, yes, I have released real missiles that they cannot escape, you now begin to pray. Let's pray. My father, my father, the man of war, the divine champion, El Gibor, El Elyon, the most high God, the, pos the creator and possessor of heaven and earth. Blessed be your name, Lord. I return all the glory to you for this victory that I know you have given me. For you are the one who taught my hands to war and my fingers to fight. And you have never lost any battle. You are the one who empowered me to run through this evil troop that came against me and my family. And I know you have given me victory. Blessed be your holy name. Lord Jesus, I ask you now to place your bloodline around me and my household, around my children, my loved ones, wherever they are, to the four corners of the Holy of the world. I ask you, Holy Spirit, to be a pillar of fire and cloud, to separate us from any pursuing Pharaoh, as you did at the Red Sea, so that you are darkness to the enemy. Me, so that you have darkness to the enemy. And you will be light to us. Let our lives be hidden in Christ. Who is hidden in God? Make us as the wind that cannot be seen or traced. In the name of Jesus. Now hear me well. You are avenging captain and your 50. Getting ready to come and attack me and all mine. I turn this battle to your gates right now. Right now, I ask you, my heavenly Father, that God that answered by Elijah by fire, 
on Mount Carmel, on Mount Carmel. release hailstones hail and coals of fire, and coals of fire. Into, the into the camp of the captain and the fifty, assigned to attack me, to attack me. And, consume them all and consume them all with all their weapons, all their weapons. and all their armor. In the name of Jesus, let me and all mine escape, and let your name alone be glorified. In the name of Jesus, blessed be your name, Lord. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Now, we've said it at some point that the night before a prophetic journey, we're still going to talk about uh, how to do prophetic actions. The night before, you take the Passover. And usually on days when I do uh, spiritual warfare, when I teach like this, I will take the Passover at night. In fact, one of the, it's one of my, it's one of the girls that taught me in Ghana when I was there. And I used to go and teach. And I would come back and take the Passover. And sometimes I would still come under attack. So she now said, oh, mama, why not take the Passover the night before? You see, the night before you have to go and teach. Or you have to, do, you, you, you have to go and do a prophetic, uh, a warfare prayer program. You take, the, you take the Passover to seal ourselves against counterattack. So that the prophetic blood of the Passover lamb will cover over us as it did at the um as it did at the uh, at passover night in egypt when the destroyer was passing but the blood protected the children of israel hallelujah amen, amen. there are many more weapons that you can look for you can search the scriptures in some places you find so many uh, weapons in one scripture like um, Isaiah 30. I was looking at it the other day. I just gave the scriptures. We didn't read it. I wish we had read it. Isaiah 30 from 22 down to the end. You will find so many. It's like seven in those few scriptures. In those few scriptures. There's another one. There's another place where another weapon that is called the Besom of Destruction. It's in a Besom. That is a broom of destruction. It's a broom of the Lord. You can release it against covens and say, Lord, sweep them all out of that place where they are talking about me, where they are taking decisions. Release your besom of destruction to destroy that coven. Sweep it, sweep it clean of all their altars. Let, them, let all their structures, let it be swept into the abyss to be destroyed by the fire of God. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. There is, of course, uh, there's a weapon we used, the sieve of vanity. <laughs> it's, in, it's in Isaiah 2, the sieve of vanity. We once used it. Um, um, one of my nieces, she had waited to get married for so long, and um, she just couldn't wait anymore. And, of course, it was a good time for the son of an imam, very wealthy. She, too, is from a wealthy home to come and he wanted to marry her and he said no i will not stop her from doing her i will not stop her from um so, uh, studying her i mean from worshiping her god i just want to marry her i love her I must marry her so my cousin came weeping and weeping and i said what happened he said my child can you imagine me a mother in israel my child wants to marry the son of a minimum the chief imam of somewhere in the north. Hey! So I said, don't cry. We're going to release against him the sieve of vanity. Talked about the sieve of vanity and a brittle in the jaws. Making somebody to make unpardonable error. You are going to be like the Berean Christians who and look for it. Google it. Sieve of vanity. you find it. So we released the... Uh, it took nine months they had done all the arrangements because the girls the girl's father was a muslim and um, she he the man now went to the father 
and the father accepted him he was bringing gifts and doing all manner of things we didn't say anything we said we have prayed my cousin will weep i said we have prayed we kept on releasing the sieve of vanity and the bridle of the lord into his jaws to make him commit an unpardonable error so they had done all the arrangements and it was now nine months later the uh, the um the introduction and the uh, traditional wedding was going to be on a saturday and um the mother said okay i will come but i will bring some pastors and that was when the sieve of vanity and the bridle of the lord came in kicked in and this man said no no pastor will be there because it's actually going to be a nikai is going to be you know their own kind of wedding no pastor can be there so we said but we thought it was just going to be a yoruba traditional wedding they said no no pastor can be there this was the week before it was going to happen on saturday by that time my niece was hardly talking to the mother immediately she heard that the next morning she went to her mother's room early in the morning go 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 knock on the door yes yes my daughter what is it she said i'm not marrying that man again i'm not marrying that man again if you will not allow pastors at my wedding at my traditional wedding it means that he will not he's lying he will not let me worship my god and i cannot have that hallelujah within like two years she was married to a fine christian and they even though she thought she was even too old to have children they had twins one boy one girl so that's all she doesn't need more than that hallelujah the lord has not left us comfortless he said i will not leave you comfortless i will come to you bless be god forever let's thank god and bless him father we thank you we appreciate you for all you have taught us that even after the war you will not lift up you will not leave us comfortless even after the war you will seek out the enemies wherever they are hiding you yourself you deal with them with your hornets you deal with them with your well wind you will do it you will do it lord because we are your children so that we can serve you in our we can settle down in our land of promises and serve you all the days of our lives without fear so that we can come and reign with you in heaven without falling blessed be your name lord we give you praise and glory we bless you lord in jesus name amen hallelujah praise the lord